Hey everybody, um, I'm one too many mornings and a thousand miles behind on my housework here. Been going to see some friends, one came into town yesterday. Uh, I'm really, really, it's crazy times we're living in. I, I really believe we're living in the time of what John spoke about when he was sent off to that island. Um, terrifying times but i'm really really happy today i it's, it's every time i think that i've seen how incredible god can be something happens to, i was at the bar the other night with good friends and the topic of discussion was a guy that was being very disrespectful to one of my brothers and what we should do about that. And out of nowhere, I get a message from a man named Lance G. And the message started out with the most beautiful, elegant dance I've ever seen with a speed bag in my life. It, the man was working that bag like magic. I've never seen a speed bag work like that. And it got into keyboard warriors and being disrespected. And at the same time, I was with my brothers and I'm wanting to be with them and see what this man has to say. And the man reached out to me. I don't ever want to cut nobody off that reached out to me. And I got the time to look at it and had an awakening from it, an epiphany, if you will. Uh, God can put the words in another person's mouth that you need to hear. And uh, what I learned from it is I don't have to be a tough guy no more. Being a tough guy is a waste of time. It really is. It's a waste of time because no matter how tough you get, there's somebody right around the corner that can put you on your ass like that man working that speed bag. He didn't look like nothing. He looked like an old man. But you got eye-hand coordination like that. You can work a bag like that. You got some boxing experience. And you will mess my world up. Even if you are the baddest man in the world. You're going to age. And a young buck's going to come along. And he's going to knock you down. Um, so it, it's just. It, it's really cool to me. You know the way that. You got something on your heart trembling, uh, and that, that old spirit of mine, that angry spirit of mine was rumbling. It, it, it was, I was feeling like I needed to get out and split somebody's head, remind them who I am. Who I am? How grandiose is that? How stuck up is that? Who the fuck am I? I'm just a man. Just a man. I'm nobody. I'm just a man. I'm a sinner like anybody else. I, I just really thought that was cool, the way God works in our lives. I mean, you just got to be listening and paying attention. Uh, I've also decided I've got a very good knowledge of Scripture. Very good knowledge of Scripture. Um, I need to pull my Bible back out and uh, daily read it just to keep that scripture, that daily scripture is going to keep me more grounded. Here lately, I've been running into born-again Christians and people that have accepted that offer and that have been saved. And just like the positivity of Mitch's channel, the more you surround yourself with positive people, I'm also going to take a break from Facebook. Facebook has become too negative for me. My Instagram family, my YouTube family are positive. Uh, in these troubling times, I need to surround myself with godly people, positive people. Uh, all that negativity will drag me back down, and I can't, I can't allow that to happen. Um, I had a real, have a man that never met. Never met, but we call each other brother, and I have the greatest admiration for him. I look up to him in a lot of ways, 
and he called me today. And it really made me feel good. It really made me feel good that he thought enough of me to take time out of his day, and he's having problems too, to give me a call. It really brightened my spirits and made me feel good. Uh, I got another call from a high school friend. We used to call her Ladybug because she's so kind. Uh, a Ladybug could hurt somebody before she could. And she has lymphoma. So if you could all keep her in your prayers, I would greatly appreciate it. She didn't know about what's going on with my health, and I shared that with her. And I told her I know what that fear feels like, that anxiety. But in my case, finding out that my time on this earth might not be that long. It's up to God Almighty. That's a blessing. It's been the biggest blessing of my life. Um, when you get news that scares you like that, you'll learn that I've had three years to examine my life, and I, I don't mean examine it, meditate on it. I've really meditated on my life, and looking back on it, all the situations I see, like me and my wife Amy, you know, that part of the Bible talks about wives submit to your husbands, and husbands love your wife like Christ loved the church. We did that, not consciously, she never said, you have to, you can't. If she did, it probably wouldn't have worked. Uh, I'm a very stubborn person. And sometimes I would do things that I didn't even want to do just to show you I'll do what I want. A lot of men would take that and run with it and hurt her and abuse that. Thank God I didn't. Uh, I cherish her. I cherish, I love her more than I love myself. But that's just one example, looking back, how if you follow God's will, things go better for you. He created us. He knew man was dominant. He knew man, he, he knows our nature. That's why he said that. Not so women would feel, and, and submission does not mean your wife's your slave. It doesn't mean she does what you say, how you say, when you say. It means that the man is the head of the household. Doesn't mean submissive sexually, you know, it's not no sex thing. She's your sex slave, but ain't got nothing to do with it. Uh, God made man as the protector, the hunter, the warrior. Made woman nurturing, loving, kind. And when we both fill those roles, the way God intended it works out beautiful. Uh, many, many situations in my life looking back that I see how God moved me. Which direction, this direction, that direction. But uh, I'm going to share a story with you real quick. I don't ever pray for myself. I just don't. I can't ever remember a time in my life I prayed for myself. I've seen a lot of guys in prison. You know, it's like that old Bill Cosby skit where he's puking and he's like, oh, God, you get me out of this. I'll never do it again. Well, a lot of guys say that in prison and then they get out and it don't take long to forget about God. Um, I call it jailhouse religion. But, uh, you know, I don't pray for me. I pray for other people. And as quick as you're going to ask for something for yourself, make sure you get down on your knees and you say thank you for what you got. Um, I used to hate prison shows. I never wanted to see prison. I didn't want to think about prison. I accidentally watched 23 and 1. One day I saw it, and he's got the gift of gap. That man's a talker. He's one of the best storytellers I've seen on YouTube. Um... Then a guy named Demel Hanna was on his show, and he, he did time where I did time. 18 years, and he was innocent. Black man, wrong place, wrong time. And Demel, he 
used to always say we'd have audio chats and and i consider him a dear friend i haven't heard from him in a while and i hope he's okay but the mel used to tell me i'm too hard on myself i needed to forgive myself i sent him my paperwork one time he said i don't need that i've been there i know people there and he also told me that the things i did in there i did to make my outdate it was survival i was in a jungle and Demel helped me forgive myself. And forgiving myself was important because I wasn't doing that. And I, I was feeling like I hadn't truly accepted that sacrifice that Christ made for me. I felt like, how can you not accept, how can you not forgive yourself when God Almighty has forgiven you? That's grandiose. God can forgive you, but you can't forgive yourself when I'm just a dirty, sinful man. I mean, it, it wasn't sitting right in my stomach. And that's something I never thought till the day I died I would ever be able to do is forgive myself. And because of that, man, I've been able to. And I saw Mitch at Hard Intentions on there. And that drew me to Mitch's channel. And Mitch is my boy. I'm part of the Hard Intentions family, and that's the family I want to be a part of. They're all positive people. Uh, they've all been through most of them worse than I can ever dream of. And they're all positive. And through that family, I've met good Christian people. And they keep God in my heart and in my mind being around them and seeing what they post. And that's why I got to let that Facebook go. That Facebook is just negative. Negative. I see negative shit everywhere on Facebook. And that's the other thing I got to watch. I got to watch my mouth and my language. I need to start watching that. Because if I wasn't cussing so much and talking about so much of that stuff, maybe some children could get some messages from me and learn something too. So I'm going to work on that. I need to, it's just the way I've talked and the people my whole life have talked and but I need to check my language and try to speak without being so vulgar. Um, but I, I'm, I'm really in a good mood today. I'm kind of joyous today. And uh, believe me, whenever I first watched that 23 and 1, there were many days gone by where it was cocked and I was ready to just end it. And... The last eight months have been an incredible journey for me. I've gone from someone who hated himself to someone that's starting to learn to love himself. I've gone from somebody that, I'm manic depressive bipolar, I'll do a video on that sometime. But the chemicals in my brain Dopamine is a chemical that makes you feel happiness. I learned that in drug rehab. I always told people, these pain pills should be for manic depressive bipolar people because I feel happy all the time. Well, there's a chemical reason for that. It's called dopamine. And my brain sometimes gets starved of dopamine. And no matter how good your life is, you don't feel happy. And I can't help that. I can't help that any more than somebody has cancer. Other times I'll get so manic I can't shut up. I'm spinning around. It's like a crackhead. I can't help that either. Uh, most of the time I'm down though. It's helped with my depression. I'm not depressed all the time anymore. I'm usually upbeat. And that's a medical miracle. Uh, so I'm going to have to let that YouTube or that Facebook go. I'm going to have to. Uh, all my people got my messenger. My family's got my number. If they need me, they can get a hold of me. But for me, I got to let that Facebook go. And I need to surround myself with my Instagram and my YouTube family because uh, <laughs> spiritually, this last eight months, the ground I have covered is just incredible but real quick story about the one time that i was very angry at god very angry at god and how god once again proved me wrong 
my half brother Josh, who's a very godly man. As a matter of fact, he's working on getting his minister's license. Good man, very good man. He used to work for Boeing. My brother Kenny works at Boeing. I can forget about working for Boeing, <laughs> nor would I want to. Uh, there is a real thing, and it's called the military industrial complex, and that's part of the reason my brother left Boeing. He works for a nonprofit now. But uh, I have on my YouTube, on my Instagram, he's my charity. It's called Kindness for Colton. My nephew Colton was born with a very rare brain disease. He had huge amounts of fluids on his brain. You would, I'm going to try doing this without crying, but when you would hold that little boy, five minutes, he would have 20, 30, 20, 30 seizures, just shake it in your hands. He spent six months of the first year of his life in the NICU unit at the hospital. My brother and his wife decided they wanted to pay a nurse to be at the house so they could take their son home. They knew his life on this earth was not going to be long, and they wanted him to be able to experience what it was like to be in a family instead of in a sterile hospital. The Maryland Heights Fire Department was at that house almost every day bringing that boy back. I watched the pain they went through. He died one day before his first birthday. And I was angry. I said, you say there's a reason for everything that God does. You can't give me a reason for this. And I stopped talking to God for a minute. I was mad. Since that's happened, my brother started, he asked everybody on the internet, he did not want his son's time on this earth to count for nothing. And it started out as a simple act of kindness on his Facebook. He asked everybody, just do a simple act of kindness in Colton's name. And that blew up into a nonprofit organization called Kindness for Colton. They have bought wheelchair accessible vans for people. We have a golf tournament every year. We have a trivia night, fundraisers, and there have been so many lives touched. Housing paid for parents that got to stay at the NIC unit, you know, in the hospitals in St. Louis, Cardinal Glen, and different places like that. And when I saw what was going on, I had to come home here and I had to get on my knees and I had to tell God how sorry I was and that never again would I ever question anything. He does have his reasons for everything that happens. It's all for something. We all come to this world with something we're supposed to do. And right now, my nephew Colton is in the peace and love of God's presence. And it was for something. This is like my YouTube, all the hurt that I put myself through. I went through some bad things, but I made the choices that led to bad consequences. If just one kid, and, and I know God will lead whoever he wants to that channel. I'm a very private person. I don't like being in the limelight. I've always liked having my head under the radar. I don't even hardly like going out the door anymore. But 
if one kid sees it and says, and it causes them to take a different path, every ounce of pain, physical and mental, I ever felt in my life would be well worth it. Um, I just, I don't know, I'm really, this, my YouTube started out, I was going to tell my story. My story is a lot of violence. I haven't even really got into the violence. It, it It's insane, the amount of violence. Um, and I don't mind telling about my violence, my truth. A lot of stuff I can't talk about because it would expose other people. Some it would humiliate. Some it could get in trouble. And neither would serve a purpose. But as I started telling my story, I realized my story is not about all the violence of prison. There's men that could tell worse. I could tell war stories all day. But there's people I've met that got war stories that go on and on worse than mine. Uh, I made a comment in one video that in prison I had seen the worst man can do to each other. Not true. Not true. I watched a documentary. It was a woman that was 13 years old and she was in Auschwitz concentration camp in Nazi Germany. I ain't seen shit. I ain't seen nothing. That was pure evil. And there's evil moving in this world right now. You better take that to the bank. There's evil stuff going on. But the revelations that I have had this last eight months, I'm thankful for. I've been brought to a good group of people. Um, I'm going to work on my humility. I need to be humble because I'm nobody. I'm nobody. I'm a dirty sinner is what I am. I am a man. Uh, I'm nobody. I'm not saying I'm not nobody like I'm not worth nothing. I'm a good person. I got a good heart. I'm loyal to a fault. But who the hell do I think I am that the whole world's so, supposed to respect me? That's a joke, you know? And just in the last two days, because of one man, just talking to him, bam. God works in weird ways. Uh, but yeah, I hit my knees and I told the Lord, you were right. I will never question you again. And think about the audacity of that, to question God. He didn't put Colton on this earth to suffer. He put Colton on this earth because now great things are being done in his name. And he will be remembered. That's how great God is. Even in the darkest when I got out of prison and found out my first wife was messing around on me and we divorced and I was heartbroken. Without that, we got married in the court and stuff. Without that, though, my Amy would have never came along. So, you know, it's like that song, some of God's greatest gifts are unanswered prayers. But I just wanted to share that little bit with you all and let you know I'm in a good place. And thank you, my friend, that called today. Really touched my heart. I admire you. I respect you. Um, and just all of you. You all mean the world to me. And uh, I hope everybody has a blessed, good day. Now, I got to get busy because I'm one too many mornings and a thousand miles behind. And I got a good wife, but I got to do my part too around here. So many blessings to all of you. God bless.